Okay, so we're going to do section 9.4, which is the last section in chapter 9, and it is testing the difference between two proportions. So uh, we are going to do both methods in this section, so the traditional method and the p-value method. Um, as far as your hypotheses, your null hypothesis is always going to state that there is no difference between the proportions, so you'll always say that p1 is equal to p2. And then your alternative hypothesis will just depend on the phrasing in the question. And with this section, it is straightforward, so your typical keywords will mean what they're used to meaning. Um, so we will start with the traditional method. Uh, as far as step three in the traditional method, we know that that is the part that kind of changes depending on what you're actually working with. So your formula for two proportions for your test value or test statistic or z-value, whatever it is that you want to call it, um, is this formula here. Okay, so I'm not going to read that out loud to you. We will do it in the next example. Um, so that's the formula for step three. And then off to the side here, it has what everything in that formula stands for. Okay, so let's do an example. So example one says that in a sample of 150 men, 132 said that they had less leisure time today than they had 10 years ago. In a random sample of 250 women, 240 said that they had less leisure time than they had 10 years ago. Alpha is 0.1. Is there a difference in the proportions? Use the traditional method. Okay, so step one, let's state our hypotheses. So your null hypothesis, we're going to set P1 to be equal to P2. Now the question, it wants to know, is there a difference? So uh, for the alternative, I'm going to put that P1 does not equal P2, and we'll label that one as the claim. Okay, step two, uh, we need to get our critical values. So I feel like it's been a little while since we did that, but um, that's going to be where you just look at your level of confidence. So alpha is 0.1, and then you look at what tailed test it is. So since it's a not equal to sign in the alternative, this is a two tailed test. And then you go look at that list of common critical values that I gave you like back in section 8.1. And if you do that, you'll see that we have two of them. It's plus or minus 1.65. Okay, step three. So now we need to start to tackle that formula. So let's figure out what everything is first and then we'll go ahead and plug everything in. So we need to get P1 hat, okay? So P1 hat is just gonna be the proportion of people from your first sample that have whatever the characteristic is that we're talking about in the question. So our first sample was men. So we just need to figure out the proportion of men who said they had less leisure time today than 10 years ago. So that's 132 of them out of the total of 150 divide that out. Um, this one, it does come out to be exactly two decimal places, so I will use just two, but keep in mind the same rules apply um, from back when we did a single proportion. Um, it should be three decimal places, so if your fraction when you divide it, if it ends up being a decimal that's three decimal places or more, make sure you round it to three decimal places. You only do less, you know, if it actually cuts off at less. Okay, so that's 0.88 for P1 hat. And then P2 hat is just gonna be the proportion of people from your second sample who have that characteristic. So that one was about women. So it says that there were 240 women who said that out of the total of 250. Divide that, that also comes out to two decimals, so 0.96. Now P bar is like a combination of the two basically. So you're gonna add the two numerators and then you divide and then you add the two denominators. So you're gonna do 132 plus 240 in your numerator and then on bottom you're gonna add the the total number of people in both samples so the 150 plus the 250. Simplify that out so you get 372 over 400 and that comes out to be 0.93. And then we also need Q bar. So Q bar is just one minus P bar. So one minus 0.93 is 
And then in the formula, we also have to figure out what P1 minus P2 is. So if you look up here in your null hypothesis, we said that P1 is equal to P2. So if those two values are equal to each other and we subtract them, then we're gonna get zero. So P1 minus P2 is equal to zero. Now, as far as what we're doing in this class, we said that that is always going to be our null hypothesis. So therefore, this value will always be zero for us. So I'm gonna make a note of that 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 is always zero. It doesn't have to be that way. You can set these up differently with um, basically different values, uh, but we're not gonna do that in this class. So I would just make a note that that value is always gonna be zero for us. Okay, so I think we have everything figured out now. So on the next screen, let's go ahead and we'll plug everything in to that formula. And I'm just gonna show the formula here so I can look at it. So that's what we're plugging into. So our z value, um, we're gonna start by doing p1 hat minus p2 hat. So that's 0.88 minus 0.96. And then we need to subtract whatever p1 minus p2 is. Now I'm gonna write this but don't write this down, okay? I'm gonna put it in a light color because I'm gonna make it go away in a second. So technically we should be writing minus zero, okay? But the problem with that is that when you put minus zero in that numerator, it makes it so much harder to type into the calculator correctly. So since for us that value is always gonna be zero, I'm just gonna tell you guys to just leave it off. Don't even write it in your um, formula or your calculation. And then in the formula, honestly, I would go ahead and just cross that part of it off. So just scribble off the, you know, minus P1 minus P2, okay? It, it does exist in the formula, and if you do stuff outside of this class, you'll probably need to use that part of it. But for us, it's always zero, so I would just leave it off. That way we keep the calculator part um, a little bit more simple. Okay, so then we'll divide, and then we have a big square root. So let's see what goes on there. We have P bar and Q bar, so 0.93 times 0 0.07. And then in one big parentheses, we're gonna do the sum of two fractions. So one over N1 plus one over N2. So one over 150 plus one over 250. And again, that's one big fraction. A lot of times students put like two, or not one big fraction, sorry, one big parentheses. Students will put like parentheses around each one of those fractions and then that screws it up. So just one big parentheses there. Okay, so now the fun part comes of trying to figure out how to type this in your calculator. So I would say the main thing to just make sure at first is that you do put parentheses around that entire numerator. So I just made those red to kind of highlight that. Uh, if you have your calculator, I would definitely grab that right now. See if you could type this in correctly. Um, you should get negative 3.04. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show both calculator screens. So if you didn't get that, you can try to identify on your own what you did wrong. So this first one is the, the easier input. So this is gonna be um, the newer 84s. So just make sure again, you have parentheses around that numerator. And then for the most part, this one's pretty easy to type in with this calculator. Um, just make sure that everything that you typed underneath the square root is in fact underneath the square root. And I couldn't show you that whole input line, so that's why I have the rest of it um, down here for you. Okay, but you guys should be fine. It's the 83s and some of the 84s that I'm kind of worried about. So um, if you couldn't get negative 3.04 and you have you know this calculator, uh, take a look here. So again, you should make sure that you have parentheses around that numerator. And then the big thing that students always get wrong is right here. So you wanna make sure that you have two parentheses after that square root. If you only have one, it's gonna mess things up. So you should have two there and you should have two at the end of your um, input as well. So check for that and then see if you can get the negative 3.04. If you didn't, then pause this and just literally, you know, step for step, copy down exactly what I have there on the calculator um, and see if you can figure it out that way. 
And of course, if you can't figure it out, just email me. You can always send me a picture of your calculator screen and just be like, what am I doing wrong? And I can usually spot the problem pretty fast. Okay, step four. Uh, this is where we draw our bell curve and we put our critical values on it. So negative 1.65 and 1.65 and then we'll shade in the two tails, since this is a two-tailed test. And then we're just gonna identify where our test value falls. So negative 3.04 definitely falls into that leftmost rejection region. So we'll say negative 3.04 is in the rejection region, so we will reject the null hypothesis. And then step five is our conclusion statement. So we'll say that there is enough evidence to support the claim.